All right, welcome back. Math 1910, we're finishing up our algebra review. We're still in chapter P. All right, and we're working through section four, just fitting models to data. Okay, so this should be a review, just being able to use the statistic button, uh, essentially on your calculator uh, when we do this. So we wanna make sure that you remember how to do like a linear model, a quad model, and a trig model uh, when we do all this. So we're gonna fit everything to data here, okay? And we're gonna start by, if we do a linear model, and you can follow along, you're gonna have to do this on your assignment, but um, uh, we have to be able to plug everything in here, okay? So we have to do it with a list, okay? So example being a class of 28 people collected the following data, which represents X is their height and Y is their arm span, okay? And it's rounded. We wanna find a linear model to represent the data here. Okay, so what we need to do is notice there's an ordered pair. The first one is 60, 61. The next one is 65, 65. The next one's 68, 67. So there's, those are each an X and a Y. So we're gonna make a list. All right, so make sure on your calculator, I'm using a TI-84 uh, plus as I'm doing this. So you're gonna hit uh, second and then the stat button. And you're gonna see L1 and L2. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit enter, okay? And you're gonna see, or that, sorry, that's using it. Um, that's, we're gonna use that in a second. So if we hit stat and we hit edit, sorry. See how you have L1 and L2 there? So under L1, you'll put all the X values. So 60, 65, 68, 72, 61, 63, 70, so on and so forth for the entire set of data here. And then in L2, you will put the corresponding y values so 61 65 67 73 62 63 71 so you'll put that into l2 so every l1 will be all the x's and l2 will all be the corresponding uh, y's uh, for this set of data okay then once your list is done and make sure that you have the same number of you know make sure you don't mess up your data so however many l1s you have you have to have the same amount of l2s okay so Next, you're going to hit the stat button. You're going to go over to calculate. Okay. And then there's number four says linear regression. So you're going to go down to lin regress. All right. You're going to hit enter. All right. Now, what you're going to have to do is tell it what are you doing the linear regression of. So you're going to have to tell it that you want to do L1 and L2. Okay. So you're going to have to hit after you do linear regression, it's going to put it in AX plus B. You're going to hit second one, which is L1, and then you're going to go comma, which is above the seven, and then you're going to hit second and two, which is L2, and then you're going to hit enter. All right, once you do that, it'll tell you that Y equals AX plus B, and then it tells you what A is, and then it'll tell you what B is uh, when you do this data, okay? You should get something very similar to the equation uh, that's here, uh, y equals 1.006x minus 0.23. So your b would be the 0.23, all right, or negative 0.23, and your uh, x would be one point, I'm sorry, your a would be 1.006. Okay, so there's modeling uh, data using linear regression, okay? So yours would be relatively similar to that. So just using your calculator, uh, let me know if you have any questions with this. If you were to do a stat plot, okay, I don't expect you to do this on your data, but if you were to do a stat plot, uh, it would do this, all right? And you would hit second, y equals to be able to do your stat plot. You have to turn it on, tell it that you want to graph L1, L2, and then in your y equals, you would put this equation here, the 1.006x minus 0.23 in, and you would be able to graph them uh, together on the same graph, okay? Next. We're going to just look at fitting uh, data using a quadratic model. All right, so anytime we have like uh, objects falling or we're throwing a ball or you know, doing those sort of things where it starts at a position, goes up, and then comes back down, all of those kind of scenarios. All right, the main equation for that is S of t is one half gt squared plus v zero t plus s zero. All right, so g represents gravity, t is time. V is the initial velocity, okay, and S0 is the height that we start with, that we drop it from. So it might be zero, it might be on top of a building, and we're dropping something uh, and doing that. So uh, make sure that you're in the right units. So on Earth, all right, uh, gravity is negative 32 feet per second per second. 
or we use negative 9.81 uh, meters per second squared or meters per second per second, okay? So make sure you're using the right value. So on your homework, if it's in feet, you need to use negative 32. If it's in meters, you need to use negative 9.8, okay? So what we can do, all right, is an example like this. The basketball is dropped from a height of about five and a quarter feet. All right, the height of the basketball is recorded 23 times at intervals of about 0.02 seconds. Here's the results, okay? You do them the exact same way. So what you need to do is you're gonna hit second, all right? Uh, sorry, you're gonna hit stat, and then you're gonna go to edit, and you're gonna do your list. Now, we wanna clear out the old lists, so what you wanna hit do first is if you hit the stat button, all right? and you go down to do clear list, which is number four. You're gonna hit clear list, and then you're gonna hit second and one, okay? And it's gonna clear list one, okay? If you wanna clear the other list, you hit uh, stat, go down to number four, which is clear list, and you hit second and two, and hit enter, that will clear list two. So now, uh, when you hit stat and edit, you should have two clean lists to go by. All right, so the X, will be time. So under L1, you'll put in all the times. So 0.0, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, all the way up to uh, 0 0.439941. Okay, so you put all those into L1, and then the Ys, you'll put the height in for Y. So 5.23594, all the way up to 1.63488. All right, so those will be the Y's for your list. And then, okay, same as before, you're gonna hit uh, stat, you're gonna go over to calculate, C-A-L-C, and you're gonna go down to number five. And you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna hit number five, and you're hit uh, quadratic regression, you're gonna do uh, second one, and it puts out one, and then you do comma, second two, and it puts out two there, and you hit enter, okay? And then it should give you um, I'm not going to ask you to do the scatter plot, but you should get the quadratic uh, equation, okay? So your data should give you something similar to this. S equals negative 15.45 T squared minus 1.302 T plus 5.2340, okay? That's going to give you um, a rel something relatively close to this, okay? And your graph should look like this if you did a scatter plot. So this is review. If you don't remember how to do this, I'm just kind of walking you through uh, how to use the calculator to do this. Okay, so we can use that model to predict. All right, so uh, let me back up a little bit on the slide. We want to use this model to predict when the basketball hits the ground. Okay, so that's when height is zero. Uh, we want to solve for, you know, at what time does it actually like hit the ground and things like that. So if we do that, we set zero equal to the equation. Okay, and we're going to solve for S. The best way for us to solve for S in this case, it's not a nice easy factor. So you gotta use the quadratic formula. Negative B over 2A plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. You should know that. All right, and then remember the coefficients. So A is going to be negative 15.45, B is gonna be negative 1.302, and C will be 5.2340, okay? So substitute those into the quadratic formula. All right, and we should get that T is approximately 0.54. So at 54.54 seconds, okay, right, there's a negative answer associated with that as well, but we don't use negative time. We only use positive time. So at 0.54 seconds, all right, that's when the ball is, is at uh, zero height, okay? So in other words, the basketball is going to continue to fall for about 0 0.1 seconds before hitting the ground, okay? All right, lastly, we did this in uh, Math 1720. All right, uh, fitting a trigonometric model to the data. Okay, I'm just kind of going to quickly, you know, briefly go through this. Um, if we take a look at this example here, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and read through it. It says the number of hours of daylight on the given day on Earth depends on the latitude and the time of the year, right? Because we have, you know, the equinox and how the Earth tilts, all right? So the northern hemisphere. It's farthest from the sun in December and it's closest to the sun in June. Okay, so the numbers of minutes of daylight at location of 20 degrees north latitude 
on the longest and shortest days of the year. We say longest and shortest because we're talking about sunlight. Okay, so on June 21st at 20 degrees north latitude, there's about 108 minutes of sunlight. Okay, and then on December 22nd, okay, our shortest day of the year, there's 655 minutes of sunlight. That's at 20 degrees north latitude. Okay, using the data, we want to write a model for the amount of daylight in minutes on each day of the year at the location 20 degrees north latitude. So how are we going to write that model? So we got to think about some things here. We have our north 20 degrees, okay, our location. We have the amount of time, all right, that we have sunlight on June 21st and the amount of time that we have sunlight on December uh, 22nd. So one way to create this model, okay, is we can obviously know that there's 365 days in a year. So we can just, you know, let's choose sign and see what happens here. So we can find the amplitude of the graph, okay, by doing what? The difference in the height, so the 801 minus 855, remember those are the amount of time that we have on those two different days, and then we split it in half because that's where our center point is. Does that make sense? So the high is 801, the low is 655. So we need to find the amplitude because the sign, middle of the sine wave will be halfway between those two. Okay, so when we do that, our amplitude ends up being 73. All right, so we're gonna go 73 above that line and 73 below that line, not at 73. Okay, so what we have to do is actually calculate that center line. So for us to calculate that center line, we gotta take 801 minus 73. Okay, 801 minus 73 is 728, okay? Because 801 is the maximum we're gonna get, 655 would be the minimum, and then we have to have that in between number, right? So if I took 728 minus 73, I'd be back at 655. So the 73 is important, okay, because that's the amplitude, that's how high the wave gets from center. Okay, remember peak to peak, though, would be 146. So the peak amplitude here, uh, if you remember from trig, is 73. So what does that 728 represent? All right, that's how much the graph is shifted up. So we need to make sure that we have that into the equation as well. So a possible way we can do this, okay, is 728 minus 73. The 73 is the amplitude that we calculated. 728 is how much that graph is uh, raised up because the normal sine wave, right, goes along zero. And then we have two pi t over 365. Well, why do we have 2 pi t? Well, 2 pi is what? One complete circle, and then we have to base it on time, and out of 365 days, okay? And then we do plus pi over 2, so that we're shifted, okay? So next, all right, this is just one way to represent this. In this model, when we're looking at, right, t is time, and time in this scenario represents each specific number of days. So where are we starting though? We'll start at, you know, December 22nd. That's when time is zero. So when we have to make sure that works, okay? So this is just one model here that can help create that. So if you were to graph this model, this is essentially, you know, what the sunlight would look like and kind of how it rotates through uh, each day, okay? So. We can actually, you know, use this data and check the accuracy of the model. So how would we do that? We would do this, drawing a trigonometric regression. So what do we need to do? We have to make our list of L1, right, which will be time. Okay, so that'll be our 0, 10, 41, 69, 100. What are those? Those are the days, right, the number of days, starting at 0 with December 22nd. So that will be our L1. Our daylight will be our L2 when we make this model. So you'll hit, all right, you'll hit stat, you'll hit edit. Okay, L1 is uh, time, L2 is daylight. Okay, once you have that done, you're gonna hit stat again. You're gonna go over to calculate, and then you're going to go down to the trig regression, or sine regression, sorry, it is C. So you're gonna go all the way down to number C, which is sine regression. Right, you'll hit sign regression, and then you're gonna hit second one to put L1 in, and then you'll do comma, second two to put L2 in, okay? And then you'll hit enter, and you'll get the trig, uh, roughly a nice trig equation when you do that. 
and it should be similar to the, your model that you developed here. It may not be exact, it could be close. Okay, so uh, just you know, know that it's not going to be exact and that there's multiple ways to do this one. So hopefully uh, you guys are able to use your calculator uh, to do this. Remember that you need to clear your list. You can hit clear your list by hitting stat, going down to number four, which is clear list, and then tell it which list you want to clear by hitting second one for L1 or second two for L2. Now, uh, your regression might show up a little bit differently on a different calculator, okay, and that's completely fine. Uh, most of the other calculators are more advanced than the one I'm going through, so uh, it'll probably actually put like L1 and L2 in there for you, but make sure that you tell it which list you're doing your regression on. Okay, so hopefully this was just kind of a review of how to do your linear regress regression, your quadratic regression, and your trigonometric regression. And we did do the trigonometric regression in uh, Math 1720. All right, so how we can take data and make it fit one of our specific models. All right, as usual, uh, email me with any questions or let me know if we need to do a team meet or a Zoom meeting or anything along those lines. Else, guys, have a great day. I'll see you in class.